my name is Dan Hall and welcome to episode 6 of Calibration TV. In this episode, we're going to continue our discussions on automation. In episode 5, I demonstrated the Fluke 2271A and how that unit can be used to automate the collection of as-found data for a pressure transmitter with a 4 to 20 milliamp output. Today's demonstration covers temperature calibration and temperature is one of the parameters that can benefit the most from automation because it typically is very slow to change from one value to another. Sometimes it can take hours. If we can automate that process then we can save quite a few man or woman hours and a technician can be doing other work instead of babysitting their temperature calibration process. Today's automation example like last week's does not require a computer to operate. This example is based on the Fluke 1586A Precision Temperature Scanner, which is a very versatile and cost-effective unit that Fluke released a couple years ago. The 1586 combines the ability to read thermocouples, PRTs, thermistors, DC current and DC voltage and resistance in a single unit, and it includes scanning or multiplexing capability, so we can test more than one sensor at a time. In fact, up to 40 channels can be scanned. Measurement accuracy for temperature sensors is similar to Fluke's black stack or tweener thermometers, and the starting price of the 1586A is around $3,300, so it's very affordable. So the big question is, how can we automate a multi-point temperature calibration without using a computer? Fluke has included the ability to, for the 1586A to talk directly to their temperature baths and drywall calibrators via RS-232. Take a look at this demo. Today we're going to do automation of temperature sensor calibration, and I've got two products on the bench here. One is the 1586A SuperDAC, which is a precision temperature scanner. On top of that is a device called the DAC Stack, which plugs into that. It's a connection box for connecting temperature sensors, and over on the left side you see these blue plugs. I've got five Type T thermocouples connected to the DAC Stack right now. Over here I've got the 9171, which is a metrology well that covers minus 30 to 155 degrees C. And we're going to automate calibration of those thermocouples, but again, like last episode, we're not going to use a computer to do that. These two units are going to work uh, together. The 1586A has a connection port on the back, I'll show you that in a moment, for connecting to the field metrology well. Just show you this connection box over here, the DAC stack, there's actually two slots on the back of the 1586A. You can have either a DAC stack in that slot, there's a control board that goes into the back of the 1586A, or you can use this device over here, this is just a high capacity input module and that can take 40 channels itself. You can have a mix of these two or you can have two DAC stacks or two of the high capacity cards. Right now I just have the DAC stack control board in the 1586A and that's what we're going to use for multiplexing these five thermocouple sensors into the DAC stack itself. And I've got a 15, uh, 5627 RTD, PRT, that's going to be our reference device for this calibration. Uh, that sensor is in one hole in the insert and the five thermocouples are inserted in another hole inside the insert. And that 5627 probe is connected to channel 1, which is the outside connection points of the 1586A. Down at the bottom here you see a gray connector. That's an RS-232 interface cable that actually goes over to the 9171 metrology well. So there's a separate port on the back of the 1586A for connecting temperature baths or dry well, metrology well calibrators. And those will be controlled if you run an automated test like I'm going to show you. Um, those are controlled by the 1586A. Okay, so I moved the camera a little closer to the 1586A so we can go over this setup. I want to show you um, some of the fields that you fill in in order to run this automated test. First, I've set my channels up. Uh, I mentioned that the connection points on the front of the unit are channel 001, and you see over here in the list, channel 001 has a green box next to it. That means that channel is turned on. For channel 1, I have function of PRT with ITS-90 coefficients. So I've entered into the 1586A the ITS-90 coefficients from the calibration certificate for the 5627 
PRT probe. And the system is going to use that as my reference thermometer for the probe. Now all these other channels you see listed right now, 101 through 107, you see they do not have a green box next to them. That means they're not turned on. All of the 100, all of the channels that start with a 1 are for the slot that is in the top of the 1586A. Remember there's two slots. So there's the 100 series uh, channels and if I scroll down you see those are all blank. They do not have a green box. That goes down to channel 122. When we get to channel 201, that's for the second slot, which is currently connected to the DAC stack, which is the multiplexer on top of the 1586. And you see I've got five channels turned on, 201, 202, 203, and 204 and 205. And those channels are set up as type T thermocouples. If I click the button next to the test setup field over here, this is where we decide if we want it to be an automated test or just a simple scan of uh, channels on the 1586A. And I've selected automated test here. There's a few other fields that you fill in. Scan count is how many times you want to read each of the sensors at each one of the calibration points. Sequence is set for linear right now, which means it's going to read the reference thermometer first and then it's going to go through sequentially each one of the channels on the DAC stack box. My reference channel, I can pick it to be any channel of the channels that are turned on. Right now I've got it selected to channel 1, which is the 5627 probe. You can actually have two reference thermometers, two reference channels as part of a calibration. So you can read a reference at the beginning and at the end, or you can even uh, go reference test probe, reference test probe, you can do it that way as well. I only have one uh, reference PRT for this calibration. And control source means on, that means I'm actually going to send commands out to this 9171 metrology well which is connected to the system and drive it to different temperature set points. If I want to see what those set points are, I click the set points button over here and I can see I've currently got three set up. Set point number one is 50 degrees C. Set point number two is 75 degrees C. And set point three is 100 degrees C. Fields over here, you can see a tolerance of one degree C. That means the reference probe has to be within one degree of my set point in order to start calculating the stability criteria. And you see under tolerance is a stability criteria of 0.02 degrees C over the soak time of one minute. So the system is going to determine when it's ready to take data and it has to meet those two criteria. It has to be within one degree of the set point and it has to be stable to 0.02 degrees C over a one minute period. So it's going to continue to check for that and when those are reached then it's actually going to scan through, read the reference, read the test sensors and then send a command to the 9171 to go to the next set point and repeat the whole process again. The great thing about these test setups is they can be saved once you've turned all the proper channels on and set them up properly. You can click the Save Setup button over here. You see I've given it a file name CTV Calibration TV Episode 6 and if I click Save it will overwrite my existing setup. So all of those parameters are saved, so if I want to run that exact same test again, I can just load that test and run it. I don't have to set it up each time. So I've zoomed out a little bit so you can see the buttons uh, on the 1586. When I'm ready to run the test, everything's set up properly, I hit the scan button and you see down in the lower left it says start scan. If I hit that button it will start the test and the first thing it's going to do is send a signal to the 9171. Now, I'm recording all the data. You'll also see once I hit Start Scan, the Record button is going to light up because it's going to record all of my data to internal memory. You can either record it to internal memory or you can record it to a USB memory stick that can be plugged in right down here on the front of the 1586. So I have it set right now that it's going to record to internal memory and we'll get that started shortly. Okay, so we're ready to start the test. I've put a second camera on the screen of the 9171 metrology well, so you can take a look at that display as well. And 
Once I hit the start scan button, it's going to send its set point signal out to the metrology well to 50 degrees C, which is the first set point. You'll be able to see that on the left hand side of the uh, of the 9171 display, the set point or control field should go to 50. And you won't be able to hear me too well once that happens because the fans of the metrology well are going to kick on. Before I do that, if you wanted to see what each of your sensors was reading before you started the test, you can hit the monitor button over here on the 1586 and you can cycle through the channels. So channel one is my 5627, which is going to be my reference probe for the test. If I hit the down arrow, I can go through my five thermocouple channels that are turned on. Everything's been sitting at room temperature here, so it's all at around 22 degrees C. This would be the second one. This would be the third one, etc. So you can check them out and monitor them before you start the test, just to make sure your connections are right. So when I'm ready to go, I hit start scan and things should begin. So you see the recording, it says recording in green there. That means it's recording data at each set point to an internal memory file. I'm going to be merciful and I'm not going to make you watch this entire calibration. So when we get close to 50 degrees C and we're getting ready to take data or close, I will turn the camera back on and we'll take a look at that process. Okay, so just a quick check on things. The metrology well is still right at 50 degrees C. Our reference probe is at 49.891 right now. I've, I've put some statistics on the screen. You can put statistics on the screen while you're waiting for things to stabilize and you can reset those statistics. So if you're looking for, for instance, 0.02 degrees over a minute, you can see what your maximum and minimum values are and get a feeling if you're getting closer to that criteria being met. But again, this is a fully automated calibration. so. I can walk away and go do something else. I don't need to be sitting here monitoring it. It's going to take care of itself. I can also look at graphing. If I hit the back button and go to graph, I can graph out my channel one, my reference probe, so I can see when I'm getting close to temperature. I'm going to go back to statistics and reset those. So we just got a green. I don't know if you noticed, but the green scan button in the upper right, uh, it was yellow, it turned green. That means the criteria were met. And now it's scanning through my channels, my five thermocouple channels and my reference channel. When all those readings are done, we'll take a look at the screen on the metrology well. It has now changed to 75 degrees C and we're on our way to that temperature. I wanna show you if I go back and hit data, those are the readings of my five probes and my reference device. And each is time and date stamped. And I'm gonna let this run the 75 degree point and I'm gonna come back when it's near the very last point which is 100 degrees C so we can review the data after the calibration is completed. Okay, our test has completed. The dry well is turned off We've gone back to inactive mode on the 1586A as if we want to run another scan. If I hit the data button right now, I can go through and look at my three different data points. This was the 100 degree point. You see at the top we've got our reference and then our five DUTs. If I hit the up arrow, that's our 75 degree point. And up arrow again, that's our first point, which was our 50 degree point. If I go to the memory button, and select the location of the files I want to look at. I can either select internal or a USB flash drive that would be connected. I'm going to click internal and I'm going to look at scan data files and hit select. And when I do that, it pulls up all the data files that are inside the internal memory of the unit. And they're sorted by date, inverse date. So the most recent ones are at the top. You see I've got two 
for those are date encoded. So it was 2017, 03 March, 21, which is today. I ran one before I started the video, and the one at the top is the most recent one. I can take that data file, and under Manage, I can copy it to a USB drive that's connected to the front of the 1586. So I'm going to copy that data file over, and then I'll let you see what the data looks like on a computer. Uh, you see on our USB drive, we have two files here. One is the actual data from the calibration, and the other is a setup file. Let me show you each. Uh, first, this is the data from the test. So we've got three rows here um, for the three different data point, three different calibration points that we had. The first column here, uh, channel 001, is our 5627 reference probe. And then all the readings from our other thermocouple probes are in these uh, other columns. And if I go over to the setup file, this actually has a lot more information in it, but it includes all the setup from the 1586 test file. So we've got a time and date stamp, the name of our test setup. And down for each of the channels here, you can see what the function was, whether it was an RTD or thermocouple, the way it was set up. It actually has coefficients over here for the, the ITS-90 coefficients for the 5627 probe and information about the cal date, the equipment that was used. So whenever you do an automated test, you're going to have two files. One's going to be the data and one is going to be information on the complete setup that was used. So what do you do if you don't have a fluke dry well or bath? Or maybe your temperature range requires more than one temperature source. If you turn the control source function off when setting up the test, then you can still manually change the set point on whatever temperature source you have. This means the calibration will not be fully automated, but at least the data collection will be fully automated, and that will still save you a lot of time. If you'd like to get some information and pricing on the 1586A, please send me an email at the address below. Mention that you saw the unit on Calibration TV, and I'll give you a discounted price and free shipping. It's a great unit. So I think it's about time to take Calibration TV on the road again. The Measurement Science Conference begins this week in Anaheim, California, and I'm going to be heading out there to film some interviews with the organizers of the show and to take a look at some new products of the exhibitor section. I'm going to do some live streaming from the exhibitor booths on my Facebook page. So if you go to Facebook and search for at Hall Associates, Inc., one word, my logo should pop right up at the top, and if you like my page, you'll be notified when I upload some quick videos on new equipment. I think I'm going to start using Facebook more for quick posts, uh, flash sales on products, and short video clips. So please try and connect with me on Facebook. One other quick announcement. We have talked a few times about Fluke's new 5128A Rapid Cal Humidity Generator. I'm now pleased to say it's officially released for sale. Again, send me a quick email and I'll reply with full spec sheets and pricing. As a bonus, I'll include some free accessories with the unit, like spare doors and port grommets to accommodate different size probes. That's it for Episode 6. I'll be back in a few weeks with some segments from the Measurement Science Conference, and I'll be working on one more video showing a fully automated calibration using Fluke's Compass for Pressure software. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like my Facebook page.